Watch you guys got another video here for you on how to install Windows 10 through Network Boot. Now, there's quite a few people that enjoyed that uh, Pixie Boot uh, video where you install operating systems and people wanted to see a bit more. So I thought I'd show you a way of installing pretty much any operating system via uh, this method. It's using Pixie Boot and it's using a piece of software called Server, which you can download uh, for free and use as a community member. So let me show you how we can go about setting this up and then also uh, implementing it across the network on your local network and be able to install it onto another machine. Now, you can also set up a unattended installation if you wanted to and set it up and install Windows 10 that way if that's what you want to do. If you want to see an unintended install video, let me know in the comments section below. So first off, let's create a partition. Uh, this is disk management. You don't really need to set a partition. You can run it from a folder. I prefer to set a small little partition here and put all my stuff on there and run it from there. It's a lot more easier to set up and, uh, and control. So I'm just going to give it 40 gigs or something like that. If, you, if you're a bit tight on space, you can give it a lot less, as long as you've got enough room for the ISOs that you're using and also for the server software. So you can see we've got an allocated space here, new simple volume, and create a new simple volume on our machine here. So I'm going to give this the drive letter E and now I need to give it a volume label and we can call this whatever we like. So something that you would recognize on your computer. So I'm going to call this PEXE and also server and that will do me just nicely. All we need to do now is go next and finish and that will give us our partition. So this is our partition here ready for all our project. Let's go ahead and close these off and continue with setting up our software so let's go ahead and go to this drive first and give it some uh, permissions here and shares so we know it's a, a shared drive or partition so right click go properties here and we're going to go to sharing and make this a advanced sharing go to share this folder it will show up as drive e in my case go to permissions and you'll see everyone which is fine and give it full control click apply and okay and click OK again. OK, so next up, let's go to the website where we can download uh, this uh, software. So we're going to go here and hit download, and you'll see two sections here, Server Community and also Server Pro. So we're going to use the community version here and download this and get this downloaded onto our machine. And there it is right there. It's very small files. And what we need to do now is extract all these to our newly rated partition or folder if you're using a folder you will need to extract all of the contents of this to that particular location so let's go ahead and right click now you can extract it from the location you're in or you can copy and paste it into here and extract it from here it's entirely up to you which way you go about doing it so we just go ahead and shut that back window off and literally extract here once we've done this, it should put a folder inside here with all of our files that we're going to need. You can see there's not a lot of files here, but that's what we're going to need to run this. So let's close that off. And now we can remove the zip file because we don't need that anymore. And now what we need to do here is I'm just going to make sure that this drive is OK to read and share for everyone. So let me just go back into properties here for that drive go sharing and then go to security then go to edit and we want to make sure there is a, a section in here for everyone to so add just type everyone or every and then you can do check names it'll say everyone click OK and now we can click apply and give them full control of this area that way you won't have any permission issues or any read and write issues for this particular partition once you finish with all this you can delete it afterwards but that's basically what we want to do here so now we've got our files here so we open this up the server 64-bit version you'll get a timer saying seven seconds so just give it a bit of time and let it count down and literally we're going to open this up so i'm a community user click on i'm a community user let that open up it does take a few seconds to open up so be patient and then all of a sudden it should populate there we go so click ok here and up the top left hand side here go to settings 
And in here we want TFTP and we're going to put a tick inside TFTP server. And that is now set there. We want to give it the uh, TFTP server root directory. We're going to make a root directory inside that shared area here. You can make the whole drive like that if you want to. I'm just going to make a folder inside here just to keep it nice and tidy. I'm going to call this something that's rememberable like server root or something like this. Not put any spaces there. That's good enough for me. Just going to right click, go properties and make sure the security is okay for there. And sharing is enabled for that directory as well. And the permissions are set for full control. There we go. Click OK. And you can see here it's already selected for everyone because I made the partition and the drive for everyone. So that's good. So now we've got that done. We need to just browse to that location. Go to the location of our partition here and select server root. Go inside there and click select. You should now see this. You don't need to do too much more inside here. Uh, you can uh, put a time out of 10 seconds and max resubmit here. You can put that for 10 seconds if you wish. And also you can uh, bind TFTP to this address if you want to. What you can do next is go to the DHCP tab here and there's one up the top here. So once you go up here, uh, you can set this up to how you like, but you can tweak these settings to your needs. DHCP server is a way you can do it as well. And you can also do proxy DHCP as well. Make sure you've got this uh, service add-on ticked here. And also we want to bind DHCP to this address as well. So you can do that and set this up how you want. So you can either do THCP server if you, if you want to set that up that way. It's entirely up to you how you set yours up. So we've got that done. So let's bind the DHCP to this address and give it the address that it requires. And literally, I'm going to select this address here because I know that's my address. If you go into IP config, you'll get all the information for your IP version 4 address, subnet mask, and also your default gateway. Uh, as well, you can get all that information from there and use this information to set up your settings on your machine. So your machine settings might be different. So now we've got that all set there, you can see it needs to restart the uh, server. So I'm just going to close this off and restart it here. And once I've got this restarted, so let's go back into here, go back into the server where the uh, software is and run it. You will have to wait seven seconds, just let it do its thing. And what we do here is click on that one there and open up the software again. You'll see it start loading up here now. And um, once we've got that done, once you're connected to the machine, you'll start seeing loads more information uh, being put in here. And you can see it's put a load of folders and stuff inside our server root folder here. So let's go inside here now. You'll see it's put a load of stuff in here. NWA underscore PXE is for Linux. Uh, WIA underscore WDS is for Windows. And you've got some other stuff inside here. So let's right click on the WDS. And we're going to put a new folder in here and call it Windows 10. And uh, let's just put Windows 10 underscore 10. That will do like that. And now we've got that done inside here. We're going to go to right click properties and go to the sharing tab here. Make sure we go to advanced sharing and we're going to go share this folder and literally go to permissions and give everyone full control here. Apply and OK. And you can give that a share name if you want something more recognizable. I've just put share on the end here to make it a bit more easier. Let me just go share here and apply and OK. And you can check the security here. Make sure everyone is on and you've got full control for that. OK, so what we need to do now is copy our Windows 10 into this WIA underscore WDS. So get your ISO, right click with 7-zip and extract files and choose that location and put your files inside that folder there, OK? Inside the Windows 10 folder that you created and click OK. And that will then copy all the files across into there, OK? And once that's done, you'll see 
all of the Windows 10 files inside there. So once we've closed this off, we can now go to that folder and we can now see all the Windows 10 files are inside there. Okay, so let's move on to the next stage. So let's go back a little bit here. So what I'm going to do here is make sure also, let's go to the start button here and go to settings. You're going to need to make sure that inside network and internet that you are sharing your discovery here for your network. So go to network and sharing center and change the settings up here and make sure everything is turned on for discovery and make sure turn on file sharing and printer sharing and turn on network discovery and all that sort of good stuff. Make sure all that's on. And also I turn off password protection just to stop it causing any problems. Uh, so I've got that turned off. This is on your internal network. So there's no big uh, risk here. So let's go ahead and fire up the software. And also another thing that you might run into problems with is your firewall. So you might need to disable your firewall if you don't want to mess around with the settings. But if you do, you can always turn this off for say 15 minutes or an hour or whatever it is you want to do. Or you can go into the settings if you're more familiar with your firewall settings and go in and allow that program to run through. Okay, you can see mine has already been allowed. I've allowed it to go through. If you're using Windows, you need to uh, allow that to go through. Otherwise, it won't work sometimes and you can run into problems. So that's that set up. And you should see something like this once you're on the other side with the other machine. So let's go ahead and fire up the other machine. So I've captured all the screen so you can see it. And uh, I'll show you exactly what needs to be done on the other machine that you're going to install Windows on. So you need to go into the BIOS first and you need to make sure that you've got some settings done inside here. One is LAN, PXE, boot options, ROM, that's enabled. On your motherboard, it might be called something different, but it will be PXE, and it might be Realtek or something like that. Just make sure in your BIOS that's enabled. Also, you can see here, boot override, we've got their LBA. Uh, that is going to be my network boot. So just make sure that you select that. So I will go to the boot up options for network boot and select that on boot up it'll all make a bit more sense a little bit later on so let's go save that and move on to the next stage which is now this you can see here please select the boot device we don't want our hard drive we want to do this one here which is our network boot you will then see initializing and then establishing a link and then you'll see client mac address and you'll see this coming up on the screen and then you will get your server community version 3.2.0 and you'll see the list of operating systems that you've chosen in your boot. So you can see I set up Windows 10. Once I select that, it will start loading those files across the IP. And you can see the IP address 192.168.0.10. And the file is in WIA underscore WDS, Windows 10 underscore, well, Windows underscore 10. And then we got the other information there. Once that's finished, it will give you the next stage, which is the familiar windows installation area when you'll see you'll be able to click on uh, your language and then install windows 10. you'll see this loading screen here as if it was loading up on that machine now we need to put in our server pe net now this is your wia path that is your network path and your domain name and user will be your username for that machine that you're connecting to. So mine username is it's me and uh, it's spelled exactly like that. I don't have a password on this machine that I created the server on. So I'm going to connect to my server now. So that username and password will be your server where you've got your server software. You will now see the Windows uh, installation. And then when you click next, you'll be able to install Windows. And it's that simple, pretty straightforward and easy to do. So if I click on uh, next, you will get the install button, just like you would on an install and then click install and it will start to install that Windows 10 onto that machine. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a big special thanks to all these people who joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. So a big thank you to you guys. And I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.